Have you met any interesting people from that, from doing that? That's I like that smile. (laughs) That's that's, yeah. Interesting is that we're going to go with interesting. Um, And just last week I got to see a naked guy. Uh, Oh, did you try to check in naked? No. So supposedly he was sleepwalking and he got locked out of his room completely naked like not even a so- like not even red hot chili pepper stuff like no sock no nothing and he's trying to flag someone down while he's waving out of the elevator and i'm like what's going on and i hear like oh there's a naked guy in the elevator i'm like what my shift's about to end is this how we're gonna do it so uh yeah he got <laughs> locked out of his room i supposedly i i don't know i don't know about that one what's up you beautiful beasts i'm katie I'm on a mission to help humans become the best possible versions of themselves and to strive for overall health, mental health, emotional health, physical health, all of the healths, without ever having to step on a scale. I have had the privilege to talk to all kinds of different humans who've been through a plethora of experiences just being a human and existing. I believe that every single time somebody shares their story, at least one person listening will learn from it, be inspired by it, and maybe just maybe, even change the entire direction of their life. These are the stories of humans unveiling their beautiful beast. Keep listening. This is the Unveiling the Beast podcast. What up, beasts? Welcome back to the show. Today, I'm hanging out with Aaron Romney. In today's episode, we discuss a few things. Finding out as an adult that he was adopted, his first awkward pickup line to his now girlfriend of five years, that time he saw a naked man in a hotel, and the time he almost broke his balls on a bike. As always, I hope something lands with you today. I hope something you hear tugs on your heartstrings, and or I hope you laugh. Ladies and gentlemen, I am with Aaron Romney. And you know you, my name? I do know your name. I it's do. Aaron Romney. <laughs> and if you listened to the episode a couple weeks ago, uh, you heard Cynthia Azakovich talking about some dude named Aaron who flipped her world upside down. <laughs> that and would be me. That would be him. So, Aaron, thanks for coming on to the show with your two cats. It's actually just one cat. He's very chunky. Yes, he's very cute. But I, even when you put him back on the bed, he still looks like two cats. <laughs> that's, that's alarming on his part. He should be ashamed. <laughs> anyway, um, can you tell my listener, who the hell are you? I will tell your many listeners who I am. Because I'm pretty sure you have more than one listener. I do. I do. Um, I am Aaron. I was I was born here, California. I, I don't I don't know where to start with this, so we'll we'll just give like the the backstory. Okay. I'm pretty sure I was born in Anaheim. That's what my birth certificate says. Fun fact for later: I was adopted, so I don't know a whole lot. So supposedly he's born in Anaheim. I've lived here all my life here in the Inland Empire, which is like you know small. Not many people heard of it. It's usually just Riverside. But yeah, yeah, we lived here my whole life and I met my girlfriend who I live with uh, about four and a half, five years ago. Nice. And we've been together ever since. She's stuck with me. I think she is stuck with you. (laughs) Yeah, she has no choice at this point. Yeah, yeah. And you're stuck with her. So Um, mutual stickiness. (laughs) Um, So I've been told in the past that you had a very interesting childhood specifically the relationship between you and your mother. And I was hoping you could give me a little bit more insight on what exactly um, the interesting childhood (laughs) was all about. So with that, having that much knowledge, it was an interesting childhood, mainly, uh, I would say, because I was raised Mormon. Um, I'm not Mormon now. That's mm-hmm. nothing against anyone who is, but I'm just not Mormon. Yeah. Uh, raised Mormon. So that already played a pretty big key part in, you know, relationships, friendships, or they're the lack of, uh, you know, how it goes. Any, any fee- opposite sex was 
uh, you know, uh, like a danger for for her son, me. Um, but yeah, so that that definitely the, in the later years, growing up, just in general, it was it was interesting because she uh, around 2005, her mother had moved in next door, like I mean, the house next door to us uh, from La Mirada, California. So that was you know growing up that was cool but then you know i later i realized i'm like oh this is interesting and then about 2005 she ended up passing away one night oh uh, that's mm. kind of where the interesting part comes in because she became a very very heavily hoarding type person so the house was mm. beyond just repair in any given time it the garage was packed living room was packed there was a kid's cuisine from 1998 in the freezer. <laughs> oh, wow. 98? 98. Jeez. When I was born. <laughs> so I have several questions, <laughs> more than answers on that one. But yeah, so the house was in constant disrepair since her mother had passed away at about 2005. And it progressively gotten worse to the point of the reason Cynthia even moved me in more or less was she saw pictures of the condition I was living in. She's like, yeah, let's go ahead and get you out. I was having nosebleeds <laughs> every week. Um, mm. I would constantly be back and forth, try to throw stuff out or help get, you know, a house clean, but she had none of it. Um, the guy I'd worked for who lived around the corner, his name's Dean. He had also seen the condition and also tried to help me throw stuff out, but he didn't even ask him. It was an uphill battle. Like we tried throwing a whole bunch of stuff that was out in the front. She came home. She's like, no, what are you doing? And then we had to take it out of the trash. And he was like, the fuck is happening here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that part definitely played a pretty big role of why her and I don't actually really talk. Um, mm -hmm. That and she kind of didn't mention I was adopted until like the very last second. So that was not too, uh, wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> she didn't tell you how old were you when she told you? Mm -hmm. More like I kind of pieced it together and found out. Oh, gotcha. And then she refused to try to tell me. So there's like three different instances where I came across like what I would call evidence. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one was I uh, you know, found some papers from the LDS church saying, you know, like adoption paper. I'm like, that's interesting and have my name on it. But already having like an idea of that, uh, a prior interaction with one of her friends at a Walmart, she had mentioned in passing conversations like oh that's before you adopted Aaron and she quickly hushed this lady up and I'm like I think I was like 10 11 at that time so that caught my attention pretty quickly yeah um you know and then I would keep asking her and asking her and she jokingly so of course you are so when it did finally come time to her more or less kind of letting the truth out she's like I've always told you you were adopted I'm like no you you didn't you, you told me no so it was already a pretty rocky relationship in that aspect. Mm -hmm. And then again, like the whole house and did make for a good mix. Yeah. So Cynthia pulled you out of that and into where you guys are now. Correct. Correct. Huh. So you guys kind of saved each other. I would definitely say so. Yes. Oh. Otherwise I'd probably still be living there. My, grand plan was to uh, join the military, which I'm not disciplined enough. I don't even like waking up in the morning, so I don't know how that was going to work out. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure they they wouldn't take me seriously. Yeah, that was going to be my next thing. You'd have to chop off all that hair. Oh, that I wasn't allowed to have. That's kind of also why I grew it out. That I wasn't allowed to have long hair growing up. Mm. And I quote from my, my adopted mother, Susan, um, you know, guys with long hair are lazy and girls with short hair are lazy. Hmm. Yeah. I'd pretty fucking lazy then because my hair's down to my <laughs> ass crack. <laughs> I, I personally like being lazy. I mean, I feel like long hair takes more work than short hair. It does. It, especially when you get out of the shower and you got to brush that shit out. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Pull the strands out of your ass crack. <laughs> that's that's one. But then you have to make wall art for the next person. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um. But yeah, back to that. Um, have you since ever tried to find out like who your parents are? Interesting story there, too. So I 
about two-ish years ago, decided to do the ancestry test. And I did the mm. heritage test, which kind of turned out, turned up results. I was able to find a second cousin who, you know, I was like, Hey, I reached out to them. And right now we're, we kind of been in like in a limbo because they're like, this person might be your mom. And I was like, no. And it was a dead end. They're like, yeah, the dates don't match up. The age doesn't match up. And then they're trying to reach out to someone they knew and their family that might have information. That was like <sighs> mid last year, closer to August, July. So we've been waiting in like a limbo to just try to get information. But I did find at least like a second cousin who's like blood related, which is pretty cool because I was refused any information. I mean, even when I left, uh, she didn't give me my birth certificate or social card. So I had to reorder that, which was fun. We'll just leave it at fun. It's like trying <laughs> to deal with the DMV. So it was your adopted mom who was Mormon? Correct. Her and her husband. Okay. And can you tell me, um, Cynthia was telling me about an awkward relationship that she tried to have with you. Am I saying this correctly? Oh, okay. I, I think where you're, okay. I know where you're going with help. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's why you said awkward. I'm like, what is, okay. So it, so um, 2016, they're about. Uh, August, I believe, is when he, uh, Scott, her husband, went to jail for a very, very long time, for 50 years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, we can totally get into that later. But yeah, so he went to oh, jail. Yeah. And then basically, because I was like the only guy in the house, it kind of became, I'm trying to make, try, she tried to make me the man of the house, essentially, or kind of like almost like make me her husband mm -hmm. to the point where it's like, people in the church were even saying like, Hey, you need to let him like, you know, grow up and get out and do stuff. But she wasn't having any of it. Gotcha. So even out people from outside, you know, could see that. And that's, I don't know, that seems pretty bad to me. Yeah. That's probably where the awkwardness comes from. Yeah. Um, from what I picked up from. Yeah. That yeah. We're probably we're, felt like, Ooh. yeah, we're definitely not on speaking terms. Um, mm. She has called Cynthia once and she, well, I had to call her once too. Um, again, working with Dean, uh, he'd lived around the corner, worked for him for about six years, which was pretty cool. I young kid who wanted to make money. He's like, Hey, you want to work? And I'm like, sure. So get me out of the house and make money. Um, but yeah, she would constantly after, you know, I moved out with Cynthia cause I left the car. I was driving at the time. I left the phone cause it wasn't technically mine. Mm -hmm. Um, she would constantly go over to Dean's house, bothering him. Like, Hey, have you heard from Aaron? Have you seen Aaron? She would call and harass uh, the guy where foreman, John, like it got to the point where I got a call like 10 at night one time. And he's like, he's from Florida. So he's like, Hey brother, uh, can you please call your mom? Like she will not let me go to sleep. Like he's constantly bugging. And I'm like, sure. So I give, you know, we call her up and the first thing she's like, oh, I don't know who this is and hangs up. And I'm like, Ooh, okay. Wow. So really mature on this part. Um, so again, that didn't help her case on that. So I've only actually spoken to her once since having left. And then she did try calling Cynthia. I think uh, not too sure. It was uh, when she was at work. Um, you know, and she, uh, she really impressed the idea to everyone else that I had ran away. I mean, I'm 25 years old as of now, mm -hmm. so I just barely turned more or less 21. So I think that's kind of a harsh, like, runaway. It's kind of like a harsh term. Yeah. Age, age wise, but. So you never intended to not have a relationship with her. I, I tried. I can't say that I, I've tried recently, but I mm -hmm. definitely did try. And especially, you know, after all the hoops and the barriers and like, you know, yeah. finding out I was adopted, like to her, she just doesn't, she's like, well, I raised you as my own. And it's a little different when you're under one impression and then you find something out and then that's, that's not how it is. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot to unpack just for your, just for your mind to, to, you know, I can't even think of the word like There's, process. That's the word. There we go. Well, I like process that it. Shit. But, of, of course, you know, I'm I'm in the wrong here. 
So she definitely doesn't like Cynthia. <laughs> she made that uh-huh. very clear. So she took you away from her. That and she smokes with cigarettes. Oh, and she has a pit bull. So oh. I mean, oh, and she yeah, that that she doesn't like. She doesn't like those two things. So I'm like, all right, that's funny. But I mean, props to you for like doing what you know is good for you. Because sometimes we have to do things for ourselves and we know other people are going to be affected and pissed off or hurt or whatever, you know. So props to you for sticking to your guns. Absolutely. I, I like yeah. Cynthia. I mean, I don't She's know. Pretty if cool. You, right. <laughs> I, I don't know if she told you the small antidote of like more or less like the first couple of weeks we were getting together. Um and I, and I quote, you know, she's wearing her car. We're just, you know, making small talk. And she's like, hey, uh, I like you. And because I'm super awkward and I don't know how to talk. Mm-hmm. So I'm like socially awkward. I'm like, she says, I like you. And I'm like, oh, that's understandable. And now that I recount that, I'm like, oh, my God, how are we still to like, how did she think? How did she proceed from that? Like, how do you recover from that? She even said she didn't know how to feel like, like after that. And I'm like, good thing you still like me. <laughs> Yeah, because she probably made it mean that you you didn't like her back. Like, right. instead of saying I like you, too, is, oh, that's interesting. Kind what, did of you, wait, what did you say? That's interesting. Uh, I said that's understandable. That's understandable. Got it. <laughs> I like you. That's understandable. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So that's definitely an interesting start to our relationship. <laughs> and then how to proceed from there. I've heard her side, but I want I want to hear the juice from you. Um. I would consistently use my work as an excuse or a catalyst to not be home, uh, even if I obviously wasn't at work to see her, uh, you know, long hours because I uh, I did construction back in the day. Okay. So I'd have to travel. I've been everywhere from Bakersfield to San Diego to uh, all over the place in Southern California. So I would have to travel for work quite frequently. So I did use it as a catalyst to see Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> um, and at the time I was also working a second job in the mall, uh, at Seas Candy. <laughs> so Seas it Candy. was, yes, nice. uh, Tyler mall, um, which Susan also proceeded to, after I left and got with Cynthia, she went there to tell everyone that I ran away oh. and I, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm like, it run away. is a very harsh word for my age. Yeah. So, Especially when you're going to go around telling people that I ran away. <laughs> yeah. To me, it sounds like she's trying to stay a victim, I guess, of something that she's not. I mean, you're not a victim if your kid moves out, but she but, wants to make it sound like vic- I don't know. That's just well, my- she wanted me to be like this weird husband figure. I, I don't I don't know. I don't want to touch that. <laughs> yeah. Tell me more about. um you were mentioning, uh, I forgot their name. They went to jail for 50 years. Scott. Scott. Thank you. Yes. So he went to jail for 50 years, which I don't, that, that already sounds pretty bad, uh, which for him would be life because he's like 50 at the time. So that's kind of like a life sentence for him. So he's in jail now. He didn't yes. serve 50 years already. <laughs> no, he is currently in jail. I believe since wow. about August of 2016, give or take. Okay. Um, he 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 liked to touch uh specifically me he 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 liked to touch me as a child so mm. yeah that's kind of where the other term oil comes into play on that that part of the story mm-hmm. is once i said that then you know xyz and then it just got all weird from there yeah <laughs> so that happened from like 8 to 16 mm. that's hard to share on a podcast so just saying that's hard to share especially for a dude (laughs) i i feel like i needed to say it especially like i felt like you know i i mean i've told cynthia and it's not like i go around telling everybody like it's definitely definitely not a fun story but here i am now so i definitely point is i've recovered more or less from that it wasn't a great period Mm -hmm. but basically to like anyone else who has like that going like you know there's always going to be i feel like some kind of solution i mean not immediately but eventually you can come to some solution uh whether yeah. that be I, I don't i it's it's kind of a case by case 
Hmm. So, um, what are you doing now? I am like now sitting on sitting a podcast <laughs> with two cats behind you. Two, two <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't even know where you went. Um, but I mean, like, what what are you doing in life? Like, you're enjoying Cynthia, obviously. Um, you enjoy her parents, or at least I see that when we go to the house and. <laughs> <laughs> A bit small understatement. Yes. Yeah. Um, are you still in construction? No. Um, it was not very feasible to stay doing that, mainly because I was driving my own car. I was uh, on a 1099, which is basically like you get your full paycheck. But then at the end of the year, you when you do taxes, you could owe a lot of money or you could owe little money. Uh, you also would. I had to provide my own equipment for the most part. I mean, it was mm-hmm. kind of. So it wasn't very feasible, especially work was kind of getting slow and to keep driving. Now, at the time, I didn't have a car, which uh, amazing Cynthia, by the way, went out of her way to get me a car when That's we first cool. got together because I didn't have I left I left the car I was driving at the time. Mm. So that was that was also the other issue. I didn't really have a car. So it wasn't very feasible for me to be driving nothing. <laughs> yeah. And then trying to go go everywhere for work. Um, and then after that. I had landed uh, a part like little gig at this little Mediterranean place for a minute and then COVID happened. Mm. So nobody knew what that was and I wasn't getting any hours to find new work. So two and a half years later, I finally was able to leave Amazon because everyone loves Amazon. Mm. So Amazon was an interesting experience. Wouldn't recommend it. (laughs) I've heard stories. Um, not to cut you off, but I've heard yeah. stories like at work, I'll be like, can I go to the bathroom? Like joking, because we don't have to ask if we have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. And then somebody who used to work there says, this isn't Amazon. <laughs> Am I going to get sued by Amazon if we talk about this? Um, eh, fuck it. I mean, honestly, they, they did it to them themselves. So, OK. Um, but yeah, real realistically, like it you had you, you, you were either good or you had to know someone. There was no just existing. If you existed in the realm, uh, you, you just it was, it was the same thing every day. Like if you wanted to do anything else, because there's different positions within this massive warehouse, um, uh-huh. you, you either were just good at your job. So they would, you know, managers would see that or you knew someone. And in my case, I knew people. I, I made connections and friends, which you kind of have to. If you don't, then you just you're going to stay stagnant um, doing the one position you're hired to do. Hmm. They were 10 hour shifts, four days a week. And then when they call it peak, uh, it was 11 and a half. So 12 hours mandatory overtime. And that was my first year working there. So that was three months of that. Mandatory overtime. I don't think I've ever heard those two words together. They get to pull random hours out of their ass and be like, now you get to work more hours. So it was, yeah, I, I, I definitely lost weight. (laughs) That's for sure. I didn't have to go to the gym. Uh, go walking around the warehouse. I'd go anywhere between fifteen and twenty miles a day. Dang. So that's yeah. I mean, for some people, they really like it. I was just gonna say, how is that legal? Is it because they put those two words together, mandatory overtime? It's a very gray line, in my opinion. I don't know how the am because it's. I feel Amazon's just so big; they can kind of almost do whatever they want. It doesn't really. They, they they have enough money to do whatever they I mean, the whole place was filled with OSHA violations. I mean, mm. you look to your left or right, there's probably something falling apart or something that's probably not very safe. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but yeah, that was on uh, then as I, I really horrible at going on tangents. But as for right now, I got a pretty good gig at the moment um, working at a hotel. So I, I I am front desk. I get to check people in. That's cool. So it's a lot different from Amazon. That's oh for yeah, sure. yeah. Have you met any interesting people from that? From doing that? That's I also, like that smile. <laughs> that's, that's yeah. Interesting is a we're gonna go with interesting. Um, and just last week I got to see a naked guy. Uh, oh, did yeah. you try to check in naked? No. So supposedly he was sleepwalking. Oh. And he got locked out of his room 
completely naked, like not even a sock, like not even red hot chili pepper stuff, like no sock, no nothing. And he's trying to flag someone down while he's waving out of the elevator. And I'm like, what's going on? And I hear like, oh, there's a naked guy in the elevator. I'm like, what? My shift's about to end. Is this how we're going to do it? So, uh, yeah, he got locked out of his room. I supposedly I, I don't know. I don't know about that one. So that was that was just last week. Oh, Hot, it, I will say hospitality is a very interesting, especially working in a downtown area. You see some interesting things. <laughs> Please expand on that. <laughs> um, so depending on which shift you work, because there's three different ones, there's like morning, mid, and then like night, night shift or night audit is uh, between 10 and 6 a.m. So they have way more interesting stories than me. Uh, they get to see way more, uh, way more wings than I do. Mm. Um, but yeah, we, we've had some interesting guests, some long-term guests, like one who was with us. Um, trying to think, I don't think he really needs a name. We're just call him the dude we're just going he was an interesting guy okay six the in the dude. morning he'd come down to try to buy bottles of wine uh at night he would try to buy bottles of wine in midday he tried to buy bottles of wine. uh he was there on the premise of getting his house remodeled for like a month and he was there with like his 80 year old uh mother I, yeah mother but the guy was just uh I don't know. We, we, we actually had to stop selling him wine for obvious reasons. Like you just, you know, can't be selling you wine at like six in the morning. So then he would try to ask yeah. everyone. He'd get upset, make a scene. Um, a neighboring hotel, uh, the mission Inn, had wheeled him in in a wheelchair, one of the staff members. And I, and I just remember looking, I'm like, oh, what did he do now? And apparently he was roaming, roaming around the mission Inn trying to find alcohol and he oh. fell. And I'm like, what is this man doing? <laughs> so yeah, he had to be wheeled up to his room and uh, that was an interesting wow. scenario. Yeah. And if you're a listener and you're not familiar with the mission in, I suggest you look it up because that place is huge and it's like the most haunted building in Riverside, California. So check it out. And during Halloween, I don't know if they still do, they do tours of the catacombs underneath it. It's not like the Paris catacombs, no skulls, no bones, but uh -huh. still pretty cool that there's catacombs underneath the city. I mean, who doesn't like catacombs? I like a, I like a nice catacomb. <laughs> <laughs> those, are, those are my favorite. I like I like the catacombs. Yeah. That's so just... you're, are, you're next to the mission in? You're not uh, at the mission in. No, unfortunately, I'm not at the mission in. Uh, otherwise, I'd have to dress more fancy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I I am a neighbor, one of the neighboring hotels. Okay, because cool. there's like three, yeah, three other hotels nearby. That's cool. That whole area is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. It, it definitely has its moments. Um, yeah. I mean, it being it, I usually try to avoid downtown. I work downtown. <laughs> yeah. Sean and I were there recently. We saw um, Steve Vai at the, uh, is it called the Fox Theater? Fox, yes, Fox Theater. Also another really yeah. haunted place. Almost every place down there is haunted. Yeah. The theater down the street is haunted. The Fox Theater is also haunted. The Mission Inn is haunted. Uh, I'm pretty sure the, uh, I don't know, pretty sure everything else is haunted too at this point. <laughs> so, I mean, this is an obvious answer to my next question. You believe in haunted shit too absolutely i mean a good portion of our room has some interesting items not as interesting as um cynthia's mom for sure oh um, yeah but we have we have some skulls we have uh she got me her mom got me for my birthday uh a fetal pig which is nice. pretty awesome yeah that sounds like something she would give somebody <laughs> 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 For anyone who doesn't know her without context, they're like, what the hell? Yeah, no, this is a normal thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, look up Dreadful Curiosities. That is her shop. She still has an online shop, right? I believe she still sells online, yes. Okay. And I believe she has a booth she's going to be doing upcoming. Ooh, nice. Dreadful Curiosities. Check it out. Goodbye. <laughs> Don't mind. But yeah. But yeah, no, definitely. I feel I've definitely become something that you know, every, every I've become something that I wasn't allowed to growing up. So I'm definitely more comfortable. Uh, my closet's, you know, a wide variety and vibrant colors of black. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely I mean, wasn't. We, we are wearing the same thing today. We, we are. We didn't even call each other. Same thing. Same skin color today. 
<laughs> but um, yeah, just like in general, just a lot of the things I just wasn't allowed to do. So now I can do them because I'm an adult. So yay. 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 <laughs> yay. Uh, my stepfather, is, he calls himself a recovering Mormon. <laughs> recovering. I, I, without context, I have a feeling I know what he means by that, but would you elaborate? Um, he just, he was raised Mormon and he's no longer Mormon. Not that there's anything wrong with being Mormon again. Exactly. Uh, that's, but that's just what he calls himself recovering Mormon. <laughs> I, I dig it. That's, that's kind of my takeaway. Like I have nothing against anyone with religion or anyone yeah. without religion. Um, I met a quite a few people in the church that were, you know, genuinely just nice people, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure if they didn't have religion or something to tether them down, their relationship with, you know, their significant other or other people could be a lot, lot different had they not had that in, you know, their life. Yeah. I totally lost. I had a next question. I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look at me go. I'm making you forget questions. No, it's totally cool. Um, I do have a question for you. I might have an answer. <laughs> I am very curious about your black eye. Oh, you see that? <laughs> I can see it. Oh, that's the first thing I saw. You you should see the other guy. Oh, really? <laughs> um, no, that's I've never had a, a a reason to I've never gotten one to actually be able to use that line, so I just had to <laughs> use that line. Uh no, it was a mosh pit. <laughs> oh, okay. Another Since thing is not beating you. I burnt dinner. <laughs> Oh, you burnt dinner. <laughs> um, fell down the stairs. Um, yay, abuse jokes. <laughs> but no, um, it was a mosh pit. Uh, her, Cynthia's brother, Rowan, is actually mm -hmm. in a band. He's the drummer for it. Fucking killed it the other week. Um, downtown Pomona. Pasadena, there we go. Downtown Pasadena, which is like more downtown than downtown. Um, he played a pretty decent set. And... Then some other bands went on. We stayed pretty late and you know, a little small mosh pit started happening. It was like 20 of us. And I didn't feel that. I know how it happened. I didn't feel it. I felt more of my lip when I got hit, but somebody's <laughs> elbow found its way into my face. And I, I don't remember where that elbow came from. It just appeared and then disappeared. And when I got home, Cynthia's like, what happened? I'm like, well, what do you mean? She's like, your eye. I'm like, oh, that's, that's new. That's new. So it's it's been a fun conversation piece this week, especially with management at my work and anyone else. It's like, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> like, oh, it's, it's it's fine. You should see the other guy. That's funny. On I, on that. Huh? No, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say on that note of injuries, I believe there was a antidote I had mentioned at Cynthia's mom's house um, the other time you were there regarding a bike injury that you were curious about. Yes, but I was drinking that night. And I don't remember. <laughs> Great. So it's a new story for everyone. <laughs> so this was, I think, December of 2017, uh, the day after Christmas. I, I remember this. Uh, so there's a local park. It's called Hunt Park around here. And I was really into, um, at the time, I just, you know, met a guy off on Ofra. Uh, and, you know, I bought some parts, traded some parts for him because I was getting into BMX at the time. And we started riding and hanging out together. He lived on the opposite end of Marina Valley. So Paris, the far end, it's more inland than that's like a 30 minute drive. But anyways, uh, we would hang out. We would, you know, ride around and somehow I was allowed to have him as a friend. Don't know how, but we, you know, at the time I was going <laughs> to college for a minute where I was working and then you're doing BMX and you know, day after Christmas got some money and we went to the bike shop, the local bike shop that was actually next to dreadful curiosities, mm. um, got some parts and I bought these bar ends. They're made of metal. The ones I had were like a rubber composite. Funny enough. I happen to have the one in my story right here because I nice. kept it. So this was the bar end that met its demise with my crotch. Uh, my crotch, <laughs> snap this this is a very hard rubber like it snapped it right here and i had was going to put those metal ones in that day for our red and i'm really happy i didn't um i was trying to do a, a trick where you 
pull up the bars, do a bar spin and like, you know, land it. But I was trying to do it off a ramp and I was getting frustrated. I couldn't get it down and I go off the ramp, but I forgot to pull the bike upwards. So I fell into the bike and the bars mm. fell into me. Um, it cost me 11 stitches below the waist. Oh, so I haven't geez. broken any bones, but stitches. Yes. Um, now question for you. Do you think I went to the ER immediately afterwards? Uh, because you said that, I'm going to say no. <laughs> no. Um, let's see. So I had a pair of uh, really skinny jeans at the time. Mm-hmm. And all I could see was there's hole. It was cold because the day after Christmas around here it just kind of gets kind of cold, not snowy or really much of anything else. <laughs> uh, but anyways, so no, not at the ER afterwards. I continued after getting off the ground. Uh, it's like a white hot pain. Got uh-huh. off the ground, started to get, ride my bike again. <laughs> Because my friend's like, yeah, it's probably, you're fine. It's probably just a cut. And, you know, of course, me being young, I was like, yeah, he's probably right. <laughs> wow. um, so rode around for another minute, got in the car, got our bikes in the car. Still didn't go in the ER. Uh, we got to go wings. We got wings before we went home. <laughs> and at that point, I assessed what was happening. And um, I'm like, dude, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. I think I need to go to the ER. He's like, no, you, you're probably fine. You probably just cut yourself. And I'm like, no, it's... It's kind of bad. So I took him home because <laughs> he had no idea. He didn't really know the severity of it. So I don't not upset at him, but like it was it was pretty bad. Um, went home and then I was like, yeah, hey, by the way, I think I need to go to the ER. And all, I lift up my shirt and all you see is my my jeans with like some blood and a hole directly in the center. And I'm like, yeah, I need to go to the ER. So then I drove to the ER, <laughs> went in and had to. I told them a different story like everyone else does. Didn't. Yeah tell them um and that was my last tetanus shot (laughs) (laughs) yeah that that was uh interesting yeah wouldn't recommend doing that (laughs) as soon as you said the word crotch it kind of came back to me that we were having this discussion that is i know i didn't really elaborate that much i just said that there was some sort of accident and stitches but it it definitely wasn't fun Mm. especially making up the story of how it happened to you know everyone else because if i said it was the bike then i wouldn't be allowed to ride my bike anymore and i'm like no i like my bike <laughs> that is uh i hope your crotch is doing well um yes healing, healing properly can confirm all i remember is the doctor's like you're lucky you don't need a catheter i'm like that sounds scary i'm yeah. happy too yeah there catheters was- are not fun there is inside parts of me that were now outside and <laughs> i was oh no yeah, I, I was like, okay, this 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 probably it was really cold because uh, the outside parts were or the inside parts were outside. And it was very cold that day, so it was even more cold. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I think I, that's pretty pretty graphic. Paints a decent picture. Yeah, like I don't even have testicles, and you know that's hurting my balls. It, just for clarification, it was it was the the. You're like not, it wasn't not, the balls. It, it wasn't the, <laughs> no, it wasn't the balls. Actually, it was like the the base. So it was. Gotcha. Yeah. That was I mean times. that that still hurts my balls too. <laughs> <laughs> my balls. My balls. Um. Did you say that you have a podcast, or were you just showing me podcasts? I I was showing. You. I had started to try to do um. A, a YouTube channel mm-hmm. um, with my friend, but we just don't talk as much. He got um, like, I've known him my, pretty much my entire life. And uh, a couple years back, he had gotten to a car accident at his work. Mm. And for almost like eight, nine, almost a year, he didn't talk to me at all. I call him, message him, psh, wouldn't pick up. And Ghost then one day you. randomly, huh? He ghosted you kind of yeah and i was like, all right i guess i did something so i just kind of mm-hmm. was like all right whatever all of a sudden he hits me up and he's like hey i'm you know I'm so sorry I'm like, yeah i got in a car accident i'm like and you didn't tell me <laughs> so i was like I, I was like hey i thought i did something so cue it up to a year and a half two years later um we, we started to try to do uh, a channel i wanted to do like a youtube channel i was like oh right, let's do like a series together so uh that's why i got this nice little mic <laughs> It um, is nice. I've been eyeballing that. It's uh, <laughs> honestly, it's, uh, it's from Amazon, curse Amazon, and they're good yeah. deals. Um, 
But yeah, it's actually a pretty decent one. I feel a sound call is a condenser microphone. So it's an entry level one, but it's it's does its job. I've yeah, uh, like I was saying, I've done some um some episodes with him, and then again, stop talking and we talk here and there, and then we just the interest was lost, and I just haven't really gone back to try to make my own stuff. Um, yeah, so yeah. I, I do have a channel, and I had some video or have some videos, but I just haven't really done anything with it in a very long time. Gotcha. Yeah, the thing about when we um, usually when I see you, I'm at Chris and Val's house, and that's like the only time I ever drink. <laughs> and so, uh, forgive me if I have a bad memory because you know it, I also get up very early. So by the time I'm at their house, I'm exhausted and drinking. And I do uh... not blame you at all. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why I was like the the following day. I'm like you you, you sure you want to do a podcast the next yeah. day? Like I'm still recovering. <laughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we scheduled something for the next day, and then in the morning I'm like, oh hell no, <laughs> and like yeah. That was it, was, it was a mutual agreement of oh hell no yeah hell no uh uh-uh. uh let's do this next weekend and here we are and here we are cool do you have any other fun stories that you want to tell my listener uh, for your listeners <laughs> um, my mom my dad <laughs> um that's a great question now you put me on the spot mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> um it's okay if the answer is no. The answer is, I mean, I, I could talk for hours. That's that's the problem. I, I have problems. <laughs> um, I, I will say living here, getting to live with Cynthia, like it's been a very good experience. I feel I've become the best person I can be. Um, I, I definitely want to, you know, keep, keep going in this direction. I think mm-hmm. this is a good direction. Uh, whether or not I end up finding my parent, my uh, birth parents or not, I mean, uh, yeah, I was, I was told that I'm not allowed to look for him. And, the uh, the reason that I wasn't allowed to find or any information on her was, uh, because she smoked weed. It's really oh, bad. Yeah. That's horrible. How right? could she smoke weed? The devil's quinoa. Uh, did you say the devil's quinoa? <laughs> the devil's quinoa. <laughs> How dare she? Uh, that's yeah, funny. really, really terrible. So, you know, you know, from like a religious standpoint, that's, terrible so yeah i mean if that's the worst thing i again i have no idea who this person is i have no information on them i couldn't even tell you her name so maybe one day i'll find her and we can revisit this in another podcast there you go yeah i would definitely love a follow-up me too i've been waiting yeah. one for like 25 years now <laughs> <laughs> well i feel like this is a good place to end um also because i really have to pee <laughs> I, I did that earlier that's when you're like all right ready i'm like okay give me a second hold on let me finish emptying my bladder <laughs> but no i i agree um def definitely enjoyed being on the uh the show yeah i loved having you here but i still have another question for you oh yes at the end of every episode i ask everybody the same question which is if you had one piece of advice that you could give to the world, what would it be? I was ready for this one. <laughs> Honestly, and it, it, I, I guess you could take it how you want it. If you pretend to be good at something, you might actually be good at it. And it, it could just be coming from like trying a whole bunch of random stuff and be like, I kind of actually decent at this because I've done. A decent I've worked in warehouse, I've done construction, uh, I do customer service essentially now. Uh got to BMX, I built my own computer. Uh, I mean bit a bit of everything. I'm not good with cars yet, <laughs> maybe one day. But mm-hmm. if you pretend to be good at something, you, you might actually like be like, oh this pick it up really easily. So yeah. try a bunch of stuff and see what works. Love it. Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Romney. Signing off. Until next time. Until. Oh. <laughs>